Hello, Chris and Larry family. Let's see if we can get my correct microphone working here because it doesn't look like it wants to um, plug in here. So we'll just use the one that's going. All right. Sure everything's running good on on YouTube here. Just double check. So I hope everybody had a great weekend. Um, I know that Larry and I did. We got a chance to go on a date this weekend. So we did do that. Let me, everything is running really slow today, you guys. And I apologize. It wants to check to make sure it's me on my phone, even though I don't know what it's doing. Well, hopefully you guys can hear me. Yeah, margaritas, exactly. So we went out to a Mexican restaurant on Thursday night, right before we got the announcement that um, we hit the 10K. We went on a date night. We do this every every single week. Um, Larry and I have been dating each other for 25 years. Um, we got married 25 years ago, and we still go on dates. And to us, that has been uber important in our marriage, um, being that we have have so many children, <laughs> we need to be able to have that adult time. So we, we do that often. Um, and that's just kind of par for the course. So, um, today I wanted to kind of talk to you guys about ways to make money on your homestead. Um, I know a lot of people are struggling right now. I know prices of things are going up crazy. Um, but I wanted to talk with everyone about ways that you can make money at home um while uh you know while getting your your homestead going and and you know being able to have that extra income i know <laughs> you know what jesse if there was a money tree i seriously would be planting it my friend um and that's, you know, like I said, that's uber, uber important. Um, Larry and I learned early on in our marriage, um, you know, Shelby was born a week before our first anniversary. Um, <laughs> so we knew that we wanted a parent home at any given point. We wanted, we didn't want daycare. We didn't want other people raising our kids. So we made a conscious effort in our, in our marriage, in our households, um, to make sure that a parent was home at any given point. So for us, that was, um, that was so very important. And so, um, there was a time that I worked outside of the home for an advertising agency and Larry was a student and finishing his degree. Um, and then there's been times where he's working out of the home and I'm home. Um, during that whole thing, we also had decided that we wanted to homeschool. We wanted to bring a Christian education to our children. There was not any, any way to do that where we lived. Um, so we went ahead and um, made that choice as well. So I went back and got my teaching degree. Um, I have an art degree as well, a marketing degree. Um, and, um, my emphasis is photography is actually what my art degree is in. So we started there <laughs> and, and went on this crazy journey, but that's kind of the way that we did things. Um, and I might be able to get him in. He's on staycation, but he's waiting for a phone call because he has to run out to a school. He's got a crew coming up. Um, so hopefully we can get him in here. But I wanted to talk, like I said, I've got a list. I have a list of things that you can do in order to make money um, on your homestead. It doesn't have to be a full-time income. It doesn't even have to be a part-time income. For us, the income that we wanted to make from our homestead was enough to support our animals' feed. We didn't want that coming out of our family budget. Now we are budgeters. I, I have to with eight children. <laughs> um, so I really make sure that we have budgeted that out. Um, and you know, there are times where I just look and say, you know what, we can't go out to eat this week because it's not here. 
Are you going to join us? For two seconds. I have a guest. This is my Phoenix crew is here on my vacation. <laughs> oh, wait, All right, wait, you have wait. to scoot over. You have to scoot. Yeah, because see? they don't want to see half of you. So, <laughs> look, you guys, he does exist. Yes. <laughs> it's a vacation day, but it happens. Right. So, Larry, one of the things I wanted to talk about with everyone today was um, how we've managed to do our homestead with one with your income, mm -hmm. um, and how. I've managed to build up other things in order to pay for the extras and pay for the animals and, and that. Um, and I've got a list of a hundred different things that you can do. They're all saying, hi, Larry, look. Mm -hmm. um, Jesse says only eat one and a half meals a day instead of three. Oh, <laughs> Not with the way I cook. I, I, huh? I eat. I eat. <laughs> Especially his height. He's got to maintain that. Um, but yeah, so I wanted to really kind of step forth on things that we've done over the years. Um, you know, we're coming up on our 25th wedding anniversary. Yep. We have eight children. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of budgeting yep. <laughs> over the years. Um, a, lot it's a lot of juggling, you know, and, 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 you know, I can't say that we've ever had a month that we've been so far extra that it's been, um, where I can just say, let's just go buy this lawnmower. You know, it's, it's a lot of budgeting in there. So, um, it says, Chris, does Larry know you have a stranger in your house? Yeah, I know. <laughs> right? He's supposed to play video games and eat. So there we go. That's all it is. He comes home <laughs> to play video games and eat. And that's, you know what? Larry works really hard. He's got a lot of hours. He maintains the entire school district. He's got a crew of techs that work under him. Um, but he does all the networking, all the everything computers at school. So we don't see him, especially when COVID hit. Yeah. When they had to change from public school in-house to public school online. That was a crazy, that was a crazy couple of years. Um, so I'm kind of thankful when um, when he was here. So yeah, everybody's saying, yes, Larry's here. I'm here, but I'm going to go. I have crew up from Phoenix selling security cameras. Of course, they had to do it on my vacation week. So, so but we yeah. are planning yeah. our 10,000 giveaway. There you go. That's going to be really cool. That's the important thing, right? Yeah, but that's not today. Oh, okay. Well, wish they're going to give something away today, but that's not today. Oh, I know. So some of the things that I wanted to go over, like you said, were things that we do in order to make money. Um, it, to, to be able to maintain that at home. So one thing here, and I have a list of over a hundred, so bear with me and we're not going to go over all of them by any means, but we are going to go over quite a few of them. One of them is right now in this season is planting extra produce from seed and being able to sell it. Everybody is planting a garden and I guarantee with the prices continuing to go up next year, there will be a huge boom for this. Um, and what's the worst that can happen? You have extra plants for your own garden. Exactly. I mean, you plant the extra seeds and they don't sell, then you have 40 tomatoes instead of 20 tomatoes. Eating, it's right? Exactly. Another one is, and if you haven't already gone to um, Jesse and Lisa's page, um, you need to go watch his jamming up June, but preserve produce into jams and jellies. He has this amazing jalapeno jelly and we're going to be making that because Berlin's like Berlin, all over that. Berlin will be all over that. <laughs> exactly. So planting your produce, planting extra plants to sell, and then using that produce as it's coming forward um, into making jams and jellies. But you can also um, go ahead and sell the produce itself. So you've got three different avenues from that specifically. Um, another thing is, is this season start saving those seeds, packaging them up, make your own brand. Do you have to escape? Yes, here, so. He's already escaping, you guys. So That's all I see him for. That's it. Um, you want to bring me that baby pig in here? Okay. So we had a baby, uh, a singleton baby pig born yesterday. She was laid on by mom, um, not doing very well. I was up every two hours last night getting her milk, but she's not um, thriving. She, We will lose her most likely today. Um, there'll actually be a video tomorrow about what we had to do in order to get that going. So, um, so yeah, so we're looking produce and you can do this at your farmer's market. You, 
And everything that I talk about, you guys check your local laws, check your state laws, because every state is different when it comes to selling items. So you need to make sure that you're under the correct cottage laws, you're under the correct um, state laws, all that kind of stuff. Um, <laughs> I do need to change it to Chris and Flash because he just leaves. That's uh, It was Chris and kids with Larry coming home to eat was what our homestead should be named. Um, but that's a big deal, you guys. So start with the, the gardening. That's something. But you can you can raise mushrooms if you're in an area that has enough moisture to do that. Um, you can start with the, the you can actually purchase the spores um, online and get that going and then sell the mushrooms themselves. So that's another thing. You can also harvest your own. Um, I know a lot of our friends um, in Missouri and Arkansas can find mushrooms wild. And that's a good thing that you can be able to sell. I know that I would purchase those, especially um, dehydrated or freeze dried of the wild mushrooms that you guys have. We don't have mushrooms, you know, in our area that much because we don't have a lot of moisture. Um, another thing is selling your fresh herbs and you can do it as a plant. You can do it as their seed. You can do it as um, dehydrated or freeze dried. So there's three more options to make money off of your homestead. Um, you could start a CSA again, discover your laws, make sure that everything is good, but you can do where you're, you have people buying into, um, and, and receiving produce every week, um, for pickup, you can do that kind of thing. Um, you can also make yourself a little, you pick up farm. Um, I know we have a few of those in our area and I actually buy my extra produce from them. Um, I do not like going to the grocery store to buy produce when I don't have to. I would prefer to buy from a local homestead or farm or, or family that needs that extra money. Um, another one you could do is dehydrate your produce and make dehydrated snacks to sell. Um, zucchini chips are amazing. You can sprinkle them with garlic and um, a little bit of olive oil and some salt and put them through your dehydrator and make bags of chips. Again, check your local laws to make sure that you don't need to be a registered cottage law or any other, um, you know, in order to make sure that you're on the right track. Um, if you're handy with uh, building, you could build small greenhouses um, and sell those. You could do the pop-up ones that just go over um, pots or small flower beds, or you could build great big greenhouses and make some money. I know wood prices have gone up, but you might be able to find some reclaimed wood to, in order to do that. You could sell, if you have animals, you could sell the babies, which is what we actually do. We sell a lot of our dairy goats and our baby pigs, um, and that pays for their feed for the year. So that's a big, big deal for us. But when it comes down to the animals, their manure, their poop is worth a, their weight in gold, especially to those who are wanting straight manure, you know, right off the bat. So they want, you know, rabbit is awesome. Um, goats, neither of these are hot manures. So that's a good thing. Cooning, cooning pigs are not hot, but regular meat pigs are. I wouldn't use regular meat pigs in my garden anyway, because the smell would be horrendous which you can start composting. If you have enough land, you could do piles of compost and sell those. We actually, when we had, we had 40 rabbits at one point when the kids were showing and we were, we were doing that kind of stuff. Um, we went ahead and sold bags of rabbit poo. Um, and we used feed bags that we were already dumping and using. So it was just a big recycle. And we sold those and made quite a bit of money to be able to pay for all that rabbit feed. So you can counter everything. Um, some other things you could do is raise compost worms and sell the worms and the, the worm tea, the, the worm poop. Um, so that is something that, that would be great. Um, Rich can't say they've been just given away equine manure. No, sell that. Um, make a profit on that. Have that go back towards your animal feed. I know how much alfalfa bales in my area have gone from $12 a piece. They are now $26 a piece. I bought a squeeze. We go through a bale of alfalfa. Um, we do alfalfa Bermuda mix with some rye in it. And we go through a bale every single day on our homestead for our animals because we can't grow that. 
Um, but sell that manure, definitely. Um, and that's one thing people will come in if they want manure, you could do a trade. You don't even have to sell it. You could have them come in and scoop and set up a day. Hey, come scoop your, scoop your manure poop. Um, and they'll clean your pens for you. So you could do this backwards trade in there. Um, yeah, you, you can, I don't, I don't filter, um, because, they tend, um, they tend to not have any seed growing. Um, I actually do use alfalfa pellets in my garden when they're not terribly expensive. Right now, they're hugely expensive, but that puts nitrogen back in. So we do this this whole processing um, with alfalfa pellets back into our garden beds. Um, so there is a way. Amber, your blanket is worth $80. It's your time and it's the amount of items. Amber made this afghan, this beautiful afghan. She posted it online this morning. Um, and yes, it is absolutely worth $80. I was next to a lady at one of the markets that was selling handmade blankets and cat beds and things. And her cat beds are round cat beds using the big, thick, um, the big thick yarn. Um, and I actually bought when we did a trade. I do a lot of trades, you guys. Um, and I did a trade for that. She wanted a welcome sign for the front of her booth and I had welcome signs. Um, and so she did a trade and she sells them for $25 a piece for just those little cat beds. So yes, your blanket is well worth $80. Trust me on that. Do not listen. Um, to anyone that says that your time and your items are not valuable enough, they don't need your, your time or your items. If you know, we've had a lot of people come in and say, Oh, you sell that sign for 25. Well, I'll give you 15. And I look at them and say that I'm not a used car salesman and I don't negotiate my prices or my prices. Um, and that has built up my customers because they know they're getting quality items. So, um, Let's keep going on with my list and then we'll kind of go over some of the things that Larry and I are doing right now and things that we've done in the past that have either worked or not worked for us. Um, you can sell fresh cut flowers or sell potted flower arrangements. That is something you can do starting in the spring. Make sure you have a greenhouse up so you can start those flowers early, but you can sell pots with different flowers for I've seen them in the uppers of, of 30, 40, $50 for these beautiful front door pots with all different types of flowers in them. So you can do that or you can sell fresh cut flowers. We actually have a place out in Paulden that does that. Uh, Paulden is a little town um, about 15 minutes north of me drive time. And that's actually where I get some of my farmer's market stuff as well. Where Now let's move on to things like poultry. Now, again, check your local laws, make sure that, um, that you're on with what the rules are for your, your city, your state, your county, your, you know, the everything. I have a federal ID number for my farm. Um, I do that for the meat that we raise, but you can go ahead and look at things like, um, sell hatching eggs if you have a rooster. Um, and my suggestion there is get one breed that are in one pen together so you can sell those purebreds. So you have all the hens and the roos that you have are all the same breed. We actually do that with cream lake bars. Cream lake bars are an auto sexing bird that people love and they lay bright blue eggs. Um, so we do do that. I can sell them for a lot more. We chose that breed for that specific reason. I know which ones are roos and which ones are hens when they're hatching because one has a little dot on their forehead when they're born and one does not. So I'm able to, to pull out roos and hens right away when they're one day old. So you can do that and sell the hatching eggs or you can sell the day old chicks. Now, just be forewarned if you're selling day old chicks, make sure unless you know how to sex them, that you're letting people know that they're getting roos in there. For a long time, we bred some different breeds that you couldn't tell. Um, and I would actually trade back roos if someone came to me and I always let them know ahead of time. And I said, you're taking 10. Let's say you get six roosters off that. You can bring back three of them to me and I'll trade them out for hens in my own flock. And we did that for a long time. 
So that's something to think about. You can sell pastured chickens, so full growns, ready to lay. You can raise mealworms for chickens. Um, and we're actually getting ready to start that project. We raise our own mealworms already for our chicks, but we're going to start expanding that this season. Um, you can raise guinea fowl and sell those keats or pastured turkeys. You can do that. Obviously, you're not going to be able to do the bride breasted um, for turkeys, but heritage breeds, they still grow very well. So that's an idea. You can rent out, you can purchase your own and rent out chicken butchering equipment. Now, I actually know of a few families that do that. They've got a mechanical plucker and all that that they rent out to people for the day. It's paid for itself tenfold because that way people don't have to spend five and $600 on a plucker. They rent it out for $50 for the day um, and go from there. You can also rent out all of that kind of butchering equipment, the cones, if you're going to do cone and slice, um, depending on how you want to do it, um, you can do that. Um, and then, like I said, hatch out and raise hens all the way up to laying eggs and uh, laying age and sell those layers. And you can sell laying chickens in our area for in the uppers of 20 to $25 a piece. So that would, um, would help you out. Now, some other things, and this is a big thing to look at because in our state, I cannot sell milk. Um, I cannot sell anything made from milk without being registered specifically and having my house inspected and all this other crazy stuff. So I do not sell my milk. But other states, you can. I know um, my girlfriend in Missouri is looking um, at getting more dairy, too, because she's allowed to sell that milk. Um, so you can sell milk, butter. You can start our herd share. Now, our herd share is a pretty awesome project that you can work on where you have a full price that's for six months worth of milk, let's say, that covers your feed. You can have uh, every share is one gallon of milk a week or two gallons of milk or whatever you want to do. And what that does is the people can come and pick up on whatever their day of the week is or whatever, you know, if you want to just do Wednesdays and Saturdays and you can sell what's called a herd share and they, own a part of your herd, so you're not actually selling the milk to them. They are buying the feed for their portion. So that's a, a great way to go. We do this when we have a stud service for our grand champion male, um, and we sell him out. Um, we actually have people that bring in their does, and I either get a $75 single day fee or 150 for a three week fee. Plus they have to bring their feed if you, they want the girl to stay in my herd for three weeks. They also have to test their dough. Um, so we do have a stud service that we do ourselves. I have a grand champion male that does amazing and he gives really beautiful babies. Um, so we do that and that's something that you could do. I actually have three males at any given point that people can choose from and they're all registered purebred. So they get all the paperwork um, I've also done where I've gotten choice of baby um, after they're born as well. So you can do that. Um, obviously, we know that YouTube works, especially once you get monetized. It's not a lot of money, but that is money coming in. You can start a blog. You can write some books about what you're working on, whether it's a cookbook or your journey book or anything else that you're an expert at. You can write that and do self-publishing on Amazon, which is pretty awesome. You can become a livestock consultant. Um, and those are some different things, especially if you're in the know. I am sought after, not, I try not to toot my own horn, you guys, and I don't mean to sound like that. Um, I'm the dairy goat superintendent for the county fair. So I'm called regularly by kids in 4-H and FFA that need advice or need help trimming hooves or need help with different things. And so um, for the kids at the fair, I don't charge, um, especially if they're making a phone call, but there's been other people that come in and I do have a travel fee for people if I do have to come in and help them with their, their dairy goats. So you can do that as well, especially if you wanna help somebody set up their chicken yard especially somebody that's new into chickens, you can offer that service um, as a livestock consultant. 
Um, you can teach classes on homesteading skills that you have, such as spinning or soap making or bread making, and offer those classes. I do um, offer classes at our local senior center. I do that once a month. Um, and so you can do things like that as well. So there's all sorts of different things that you can tap into. We've only gone through 40, you guys. I have a list of over 100, so we're going to keep going here. Um, I'm going to scroll back through and make sure I haven't missed any questions, you guys. Um, and by no means can you do everything on this list, I will, will tell you. Um, Chuck's saying his son's starting to grow mealworms for his gecko is perfect. And what you can do, Chuck, is he can go ahead and get a big batch of those going and start selling little styrofoam containers of mealworms. Um, and people will buy those, especially for the lizards. I know Shelby raises her own. Um, she raises her own. It's a type of roach that she, certain animals eat. She raises her own mealworms and she raises her own mice um, for all of her snakes because my oldest daughter has a reptile rescue. Um, KY survival 76 had this question and I will tell you, I can't do it. <laughs> there are certain ways to look at their wings for certain feathers when they're two days old, when they're, you know, first coming in, um, that you can do to check, to sex those chickens. Like I said, I have auto sexing breeds that when they're born, the males and females look different. Um, and I, I do that breed specifically because I don't want to sell 10 roosters to someone and then come back and be all angry with me that I had 10 roosters and I must have known, um, which is why I do it this way. So yeah, definitely you have to learn how to do that. But if you find an auto sexing breed, there's the red and black sex link that you can do. There are the cream laid bars. Like I said, that's the one that we do. They're a smaller bird, but they're kind of a powerhouse to, for eggs and people love those blue eggs. Um, so yeah, there's those. Uh, Jerusha's raising barred rocks and buff Orpingtons. Those are some great, great egg multi bird, um, to be able to do. Um, and then Rich Cat's asking, will you be able to teach us how to raise mealworms? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, that's on my list of videos to make. Um, that and the fodder videos. I still have to put all those together. And I apologize to um, Glenn and Jessica. They were asking about um, fodder and doing all that. So um, I do have to go ahead and do. And that's another thing that you can sell. So let's keep going on with my list for right now. And um and then we'll get some more questions. You guys, if you do have any questions and I have an answer, please repost them. Um, I'm actually reading a list at the same time and we will do a giveaway at the end of this as well. For those that um, were here in the beginning, we got to see Larry, like I said. And yes, we hit our 10K, you guys, on Friday. Actually, during the Tuber Chat, um, Kevin over at Tuber Chat had thrown us up there when we were at 9998 and watched the count go over, which was really cool, you guys. Um, we just got our official letter from YouTube about an hour and a half ago or so that said, congratulations, you made it. So um, now we're in the process of getting our merch up. Um, and so we'll get there. And that's another thing. Like I said, YouTube, blogs, Facebook, I run a lot of ads, so a lot of our money goes back into that. That's how we hit our 10,000. But you can also have AdSense on your blogs if you want to earn some money that way. Um, and those are some different ways to do it, as well as selling merch and other things. Um, homestead critters is my next category. And you can raise pigs and goats for meat and sell them the way we have to do it here in Arizona is I have to sell them the live animal if it's ready for butcher. And then I contact the butcher and take the animal to them and then they pay the butcher fee. Um, we also can sell them as babies and people can raise them out themselves. It just depends on what their age is and how, how it fits in. But you, in Arizona, you cannot sell the meat unless you're a USDA certified. Um, so that's why my butchers that I sell to are. Um, and so we just do this kind of swap. But like I said, find out what your local laws are and that works. But you can raise goats, sheep, steer, pigs, 
rabbits, turkeys, um, and meat chickens. You can do all of those and sell them as a finalized um, meat product or as babies for people to raise themselves. Another thing that you can do is start beekeeping. Now, I have never done beekeeping. I'm fascinated by it uh, because you can sell the honey, the beeswax, and the bees themselves. Now, I am allergic to bees, so I've always had this fear of even putting on a suit and possibly getting stung. Um, but you can do that. That is something I know I buy local honey um, on purpose. It, it helps with my allergies and that. So, um, and another thing you can do is raise and sell fish. If you have the honor of having a pond, you can do that. Or you can do an aquaponic system and do the same. So you can do that and sell fish. Or you can even have a fishing day. If your pond is big enough and you have enough fish in there, you can do a fishing day and, and sell time. Um, or weighted fish for that. Um, you can train bird and gun dogs if that's something that, that you have an expertise in, um, as well as breeding livestock guardian dogs. I know we love our LGB, although he's deaf, he's, he's a pretty cool dog, except for the white dog hair in my house right now because he is um, shedding that winter coat to the summer stuff. You can raise animals for fiber and sell their fibers. So you can do the hair sheep. You can do the regular wool sheep. You can do alpacas. Um, so there's so many different animals there that are also able to do. And I'll post, once this is done, post a link of all the things that we're going over to you guys. So um, you know what? Cottonwood Ranch, if I had my way, I absolutely would leave Arizona and go to someplace green with water. Um, I've lived in Arizona for 32 years now, and Larry and I met here. We raised our children here, and we would be so open to finding property where we could have a homestead that's green. I always worry about the prices of things because we can't grow a lot of our own um, because of that. So one day, maybe Larry has like six more years before he can retire from the school district. So, um, <laughs> and, and Jesse's right. We've actually looked at some properties in Texas, in Arkansas, in Missouri. Um, we're looking at some of our different options right now and trying to figure out if it's something that is what we would do. Um, and it's not on the list right now, but it's definitely a future thought for us. So um, especially considering that all the Arizona laws have been coming down and starting to really, um, really come down to everything. So we've been definitely looking at that. Um, let's see here. You could spin your fiber, like I said, raise fiber animals and sell the fiber, or you could spin that and make yarn and then make different creations with it. Um, and then raise and sell fishing bait is another fun one that you can do because you can use those worms for castings or you could do other things with it. Now, this is where my favorite part comes into is that whole getting creative part. When Larry and I decided that no matter what, I had to stay home and my teaching um, teaching online um, kind of fizzled. I was an international teacher for five years. Um, and when COVID hit, they actually fired all of the American teachers so that they could hire all Chinese teachers because I worked in China online at two o'clock in the morning every day. Um, when that fizzled out, we had to come up with something fairly quickly to sustain the income that was missing then. So um, that's when we really took off with our business. We were already making goat soap and goat lotion. Um, but then we started doing all the livestock signs and jewelry and all that kind of stuff. So that has really taken off and it has made up the income, the, the difference now. So you could make different items like, like I said, we're doing lots of earrings and things like that, that people are, um, that people are wearing at different shows and that and, and supporting the, the different kids and what their animals are. So we do a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, but you can do homemade crochet or knitting projects. Now I do not crochet or knit of everything. There's, we were joking online the other day. They're like, is there anything Chris does not do? I do not crochet and knit and I do not do brain surgery. Those are the, 
the things that I do not know and don't do, but you can do that. I know that um, Amber was in here and saying that somebody said her item was too expensive. Absolutely not. I have seen blankets go from the two and $300 range. So um, put yourself out there, put yourself on Etsy, put your, make yourself a website. They're not terribly expensive. I think I spend $20 a month on our website and we sell much more than that on our website. You can learn the trade of becoming a farrier. People do use farriers, not just for horses, but also for clipping pig hooves and goat hooves and sheep hooves. Um, so you can also do that. You can take a step further and become a blacksmith and start doing your own horseshoes or make knives and metal decor and that kind of thing. All of this can be done at your home as well. So that's the best part. Again, you can make that soap um, or sell homemade goods at craft fairs, which is actually what Larry and I do. So we do our lotions and our soaps as well as our signs at craft fairs and then the earrings and, and that. Um, so we do that at a craft fair. And then we have an Etsy store that we do custom livestock signs for kids for their showing it and that. And that's actually what I've been cutting all morning. I have 16 orders that have to leave the house today. So you can do that. You can make flies for fishing or do custom pottery. Um, if you can sew, which again, I'm not a, a fabric artist by any means, but you can do mending, sewing, or alterations for people if you have that skill. You can make quilts, make afghans, depending on which direction you want to go. You can also create owl boxes or bat boxes to sell to people. Um, dog houses, rabbit hutches. Um, I know we put boxes in for our mama rabbits when we had rabbits and you can build those and sell those. I know I would prefer to buy local than to have them shipped in, especially if you have them in stock. Um, you could drop plans or create things like uh, chicken tractors, um, livestock buildings, and you could either sell the items or sell the plans for those items. Um, let's see what else here is on my list. Floral arrangements for people, especially um, for cemeteries. You could do that with the fake flowers. I know that we've had people do that for us, for our son. Um, you could build custom bird feeders or bird houses. Um, bread boxes are another one that people use a lot. And then we get into some other things where you can make fresh bread. You can make fresh home goods. Again, check your local laws. I know cottage laws are pretty strict here in Arizona, but I don't know what they are in the rest of the US, but those are things you could do. You could also learn how to tan and sell hide. Um, I know a lot of you guys raise rabbits. So like I said, if it's something you can do, you might wanna look at seeing if it's doable for you to be able to make money off of it. Um, if you're allowed to in your area, you can make sausages um, off of the meat that you've, you know, you've butchered yourself. You can make homemade chocolates and fudges and cookies and that kind of thing. Um, you could buy and resell on a eBay and Amazon. You could do some sort of resale out of your house if you wanted to. Another thing is, is forage. You could forage for walnuts. You could forage for um, different mushrooms and sell those uh, separately. Um, you just get your, your customer list going. You could do scrap metal recycling and sell that metal. Right now, that's got a huge price. Um, another one is antler sheds, and you can make things from them or even just sell them direct. If you have the capability of doing maple syrup, which I've never done because we don't have maple trees like that here where I live, but that would be really a cool thing. Um, or even uh, cutting and selling firewood. I know we go through five quarts uh, in a winter time here. That's the heat, the only heat we have for our house. I have a heater, but it's so expensive with propane that firewood was a lot cheaper. We buy from um, local people instead of going through a company. Um, the morel mushrooms, that's a big deal. Just make sure you're not going onto private property. The wild asparagus is another one that you could do. Berries, 
um, and sell those wild berries. Um, contact your local farmer's market, you guys, and see what the rules are. Ours, I can't sell any of my signs at because my wood is not from Arizona. It's just bought in a store in Arizona. So I have to really watch. I have to have 90% or more have to be Arizona made. So I have to really watch those numbers. Um, sell your services, you guys, freelance photography, writing, snow removal, if you're in an area that you can do that, yard work for others, uh, mechanical maintenance. If you know how to work on a tractor or a lawnmower, by God, sell your services for that. You can make a decent amount of money on this side um, at your at your um, your homestead. Um, welding projects, if you're a welder, um, farm sitting. I know a lot of Forge and FFA kids will advertise farm sitting, and that's who Larry and I hire when we go on trips. Is I hire those kids and find out. For us, I think I spend $30 a day or so for them to come out and feed. And I have all the feed laid out and ready for them. They just have to feed and water animals. Um, pet sitting is another one. Um, rototilling or tractor work for people. Um, or if you have a small sawmill, you can sell lumber. Um, and then another thing that you can do is rent out your pastures if you have enough of them. I know here I don't. But um, Belt Loop's coming in and says he wants to say, hey. Well, it's good to see you in here, my friend. $20 a gallon for blackberries. I would pay that. I would pay that with no problem to make blackberry jam or freeze dry them for later. No, morals do not grow in Arizona. Um, mushrooms in general do not grow in Arizona. I have a few in my garden right now that we can't eat because I don't know what kind they are. Um, and it's just from all the watering we've been doing. But mushrooms tend to not grow here. Um, big, tiny, outdoor, family time. Enjoy your day. Many blessings. Absolutely. You got. You guys have an amazing day. Um. Forage for elderberries is, is fantastic. People love elderberries. I love elderberries. I actually use them. I make a syrup for myself that I take in the winter time. <laughs> Jesse wants to sell sewing thimbles, but people already have them. So yeah, if you already sew, you already have them. I actually have a whole display of them. I collect thimbles. Um, I had did for years when I was a child and I have a display of like 50 or 60 of them. Um, so yeah, you guys, these are all great ideas. Yeah, you know what, Jerusha, you could sell small chicken coops. Absolutely, people will buy those. They want little houses for their chickens. You could do dog houses as well. Um, we actually use igloos and dog houses for our birds. So you could do something like that as well. Eerie Frog, hello. Um, and I just want to go through the group. We've actually got 28 people in here right now. You guys, thumbs up, please, because it, it does hit that um, YouTube algorithm. Um, Stock Explorer, hello. Thank you so much um, for the congrats. We, Like I said, we've worked really, really hard to get our, our channel to where it's at, and we're still continuing to do things. We're not changing our attitude as well. We are getting ready to put together our 10,000 giveaway. It'll be an evening. Um, and guess what? Larry will probably be there. <laughs> so we will be doing a giveaway, a big giveaway. Um, I think we've got 15 or 20 things right now. Um, so that, let's see, what else is in here? Pumpkin patches, Christmas tree farms. You can grow and sell your beef cattle or dairy cattle. I know I've actually butchered dairy cattle. Um, for us, they're a little bit smaller and don't have quite the meat, but they still are beef, I will tell you. Um, and the last thing on my list is if you have enough to rent out pastures, you can actually board other people's animals um, and pay, you know, they pay you um, a monthly fee and they can come in and get their animals when they want. Oh, in the smoke with Keenan. I'm so glad you enjoyed that video. There's a lotion video on there as well. Um, so check it out. Oh, look at that, you guys. Jesse's donating two bottles of vanilla for our giveaway. Jesse, I'll get with you on that and we'll get figured out. Um, now, 
what has worked for Larry and I, what hasn't? Oh my. Obviously our business has worked, but I'm constantly changing my business. Earrings were not part of it in the beginning. Um, the soap and lotion has been the big, that was their starter business for us when it came to Homestead. Then we brought in our laser machines and we do signs. The next thing that we did bring in, um, we have sublimation machines. So we do the, the tumblers and we do custom tumblers for companies. So that's been a big one. Um, this last month we've done 400 tumblers for two different companies right now that have logos and things on them. Um, so that was a very, very big, big seller for us. Um, we're actually getting ready to do the, the beer koozies. I got a shipment of those blanks and I don't even know what I did with them. I've been crazy in here. Um, so we do that. Um, one thing that I do a lot of is I do logo design for companies. Um, and so I do that as well as advertising postcards and things like that. I've been doing that for years. That's actually what I went to school for originally um, and worked for an advertising company. I actually worked for a firearm, uh, Davidson's Firearm, which is a big distributor. It's one of the, the top four distributors in the U.S. Um, for firearms. And I worked in their advertising um, department for several years when Shelby was a baby. And then um, when I was put on bed rest, I went with Griffin. So he's 20. So it's been that long since I've been in there. I actually brought a lot of my work home with me and then ended up building my own business off of that. Um, so those are different ones that you can do. Um, find something that works for you though. Um, you know, some people just look for, you know, designing of stickers. It's like, I, I just got my sticker board down here. I'm getting ready to put all these up, but people a lot of times need help. I've got all the different stickers that have come in. Sometimes they need help getting these designed. You could sell your services for doing things like that. Um, what hasn't worked for us? Um, I'm not consistent enough with baking bread for other people. Um, I wanted to for a long time. Um, I'm not consistent enough with my design work on cookies um, for icing. I um, love it, love doing it, but I just do not have the hours to put in for that. Um, some seasons are going to be really slim and others are going to be great seasons for when you're raising goats and pigs and things like that. We had a singleton Cooney Cooney born to one of our mamas yesterday and she rejected it. Um, I think she actually laid on the baby on top of it. So we have a piglet in the house right now, um, who's not doing well, but that's something that we were hoping to have five or six babies off of and be able to sell those to cover some other things. So you, you find what's going to work and what doesn't last season for dairy goats, we had 80% males, which for dairy goats is not a good thing. Um, but we ended up finding some homes for them that uh, they wanted withers uh, as pets. Um, if not, they would have ended up in my freezer. So I guess I kind of went on the wrong side for that because that's meat that we're missing. Um, but there are so many different things. This next year, we're, we as a family are focusing on um, growing additional plants um, for this next season. Um, to start selling in March of next year. That's on our family goal list um, to make sure that other people in our area have enough. Um, another thing that you could do is do microgreens. You can buy the seeds and do sprouting seeds and microgreens. So think outside the box. If it's something you're good at, go for it. Don't be afraid to start a business. Don't be afraid to transform a current one. You know, one thing that we started doing um, and I actually had a customer call me and said, hey, do you make these? And I'm like, yeah, sure, absolutely. And I'm like, how the heck do I make these? Um, we do the smellies, the car freshies, um, but they're always animal themed. Um, so we found our specific niche when it comes to um, our business. So we are all livestock themed or Christian based. Um, and so when we say we have a farm stand, with product, it's because it's all farm theme related. Um, so yeah, just 
like I said, just keep going with things. Um, but you're very, very capable of selling from your homestead, even if it's just something you're doing on the weekend or something that you're doing in the afternoon after work for an hour. Um, make your list of what you're good at and you can rent out yourself to a specific item. Um, I am backed up on my own stuff right now. So I have learned what I need to do um, in order to get things going. Now, some, some states will allow you to sell freeze dried food and some do not. Again, you have to make sure that you find what works in your state in order to get that business really going. Um, I know Annette down in Australia has messaged me a few times to figure out what she can do. She has some pretty amazing items. I don't know about Australia and how Etsy works and if they have their own type of Etsy or eBay. Um, but that's where I would definitely start um, if you have goods that you can sell. Um, metal work is an amazing. If you have the capability of cutting metal signs for people, people love those on their front door with their numbers, with their welcome to our family. Um, those are a big seller in our area. Find a piece of art that you like to create. I know there's one gentleman that I see a lot of at our art, at some of the craft fairs and art shows that I go to, um, that he makes these big, beautiful American flags out of wood and they're all stained and painted and they're, they're amazing. And he may only sell one, but he sells them for four or $500 there. I mean, they're huge and they're gorgeous. Find what works. So that's, that's where I'm at. Um, when it comes to businesses, um, start small and just keep adding to it. If you're, if you have 15 rabbits, bag up that poop every week and let it sit in feed bags and start to mulch and do that stuff you can put straight on your garden. I have a friend who, who owns a company called the Godalizer and he sells goat manure that's bagged up and he has it composting and he bags it up for little old ladies and their house plants and it's all ready and they can just drop a bag of this manure in their tea bags that he has and so they just water over the top of it and it lets that nutrients fall into the soil so there's different ways that you can figure out how to make your business go <laughs> there is. Our chats tend to have a lot of energy, um, KY Survival. And what is your first name? Because I don't think I've seen you in any of my chats before. And I really appreciate you being here. Um, unless you want me to call you Kentucky Survival, I, I will be more than happy. Yes, Mike, oh, eggshells do work. They take a lot to break down. Um, but they do work in your garden. Um, tomatoes love eggs. I will tell you that tomatoes love eggs. And I actually do break an egg under my tomatoes when we're planting. Um, the yolk in the egg mixes with the soil and it actually causes some fertilizer. It takes a little bit, um, a couple weeks out before it really starts to break down. It does not make your garden smell. I will tell you that because it's buried in the ground but I drop the whole thing in, break it up and drop the whole thing in. Now those shells, it takes a long time before they break down. Um, it could take up to a year before they break down, but we do drop um, Epsom salt and we drop eggshells and all that kind of stuff into our garden. Thank you, Randy. Randy just dropped a super, a super sticker. Thank you so much. We appreciate it every little bit. Um, goes back into our homestead. Anything that we do make on YouTube goes towards a different project that we're working on um, in in our um, Garth. Okay, Garth, call him Kentucky. Okay, well, we will call you Kentucky then. Um, but it's so good to meet you here. Um, Garden State Gardener just dropped in and it's great to see you. So I think we need to do a giveaway though, you guys. Let's see here. What do we want to give away today? Um, oh, and has anybody heard from, there was a blue farm and it's not blue from Great Britain. It's blue farm. They won a couple weeks ago and have not sent me their address. Does anybody know them personally? Um, because I would love to send them. I still have their, their, their chicken coaster sitting right here. 
And Tony, I've got to get your address still. I forgot to get that last week when I talked to you on the phone last week. Um, but definitely look at, like I said, look at your different laws. Some places you can sell pickled eggs, some you can't. Some you have to get a cottage law for egg, some you don't. Um, I know I have customers that will call me and say, hey, do you have any hatching eggs? And I say, absolutely. And I do sell my hatching eggs for more than what um, I sell my other eggs for. Randy just dropped a second super sticker. He's all about super stickers today. Thank you, Randy. I appreciate it. Missouri Ella, you guys check out his page too. Um, we like to go and visit anyone who does do that supporting and I'll throw out um, a link on my community tab here in a little while. So you guys um, find different ways that work um, for you. I know that um, Leanne over at Mennonite, she cans everything. She could open her own farm stand just of canning. I don't know what her laws are in the area, but oh my gosh, if I were ever traveling through, I'd be stocking up. Um, so you find what works and that's, you know, definitely a, a big deal. Um, yeah, misplaced, you are, you are close to Kentucky, aren't you? Are you trying to buy in Kentucky, if I remember correctly? But you guys definitely now, one thing that we do, and let me, let me grab a, I don't know what we're going to give away today. I think I'll give away a cutting board today, you guys. Um, I'll do a custom cutting board. How does that sound? Um, let me get my, if you win the custom cutting board today, then you need, I guess I actually have to write the right word. Hang on. There it is. Stream yard. Um, I will put on a logo or any saying or anything that you want on it. Let me go grab one so we can see. So let's do hashtag cutting board. Okay. Hashtag cutting board, one word, y'all. Um, so there it is. If I win when we do this, I will redraw. Let me, I have some mini cutting boards that are really, really cute. Let's see if I have any right there. So I have this size, so I will put your logo on this. These are just a mini cutting board. They're bamboo. Um, but if whoever wins, I'll put whatever they want on it. They just have to email me and tell me and we'll get it etched in there. So it could be your logo. It could be a saying. It could be grandma's handwritten recipe. I don't care. Whatever you guys want. So hashtag cutting board for today, you guys. And then Larry and I will be posting probably tomorrow the date that we're going to do our 10,000 giveaway. Um, we're so thrilled, you guys, that we've made it this far. I have lots of local customers on there. Somebody asked me, how did you get to 10,000 when you don't have a lot of people commenting on videos? I advertise everywhere. Um, I advertise at my shows. People add right then and there. That doesn't mean that they're always watching, but a lot of times my local customers will go on and find what I'm doing um, and watch one or two and then um, drop off for a little while and then come back again. So we have, I think I've got, when I did a count, when we went through and looked, I think I've got close to 3,000 of our 10,000 are just my local customers. So just know that your YouTube viewers come in all shapes and sizes from all different directions. Um, but yeah, Oh, I see Nana from Nine Acres. Nana, get in on this too. A hashtag cutting board. I'm going to be cutting whatever you guys want on one of these. We'll etch it in. Um, and then you can use the back side as a cutting board and the front side as a display if you want. Um, I actually have a charcuterie board that we've done in this as well. So if that's something that somebody wants, we can do that. Um, but yeah, definitely put that in there. Hashtag cutting board, you guys. Yeah, Amber is what Amber Holmes here. She is one of my locals. Um, Amber watches a lot of videos though, and there's I have a lot that don't too. So just know that. But um, our goal right now is to start building up more watch time, more watch hours. We did have a couple videos go viral. I have a couple videos that are in the five uh, fifty thousand view mark. So yes, that is how we got ten thousand subscribers. 
And I will keep doing exactly what I've been doing all along. We will continue to jump in on lives. We'll continue to watch and comment on different um, videos. And we're going to continue to put out our two videos a week and a live and a couple shorts. And we may up it later on or lower it depending on what works for our family. Um, yeah, see, Leanne saying she put herself out there to her local community as well. So she... I. Leon, you're in the 7,000 range right now, if I remember, and don't quote me on that, because I apologize if I'm off on that. Um, but yeah, we, like I said, we, we get things figured out and, um, Annette, yes, create a website. Um, I, she said, uh, I'm going to post this up here. It says, I need to create a website. I have created a Facebook business page, but a website would reach broader audiences. Absolutely. And one thing that I do is my business card has, I don't even have a YouTube channel on my business card. Um, and my next batch will have that Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and YouTube. Those are the social medias you want to be on. Now, all of my TikTok videos are just my shorts from, from YouTube. Every single day I try and post something on Instagram and it's just a picture of something going on at our household that has built up my customer base. And then I've got my Facebook page. I've got my personal page and I've got my business page on there. So those are things that you can do and start advertising on there. We do pay for ads on Facebook. We do pay for ads on Instagram and um, we do Google ads as well. So it builds up that customer base. People do like and subscribe because of that. Okay, and let's see here. So Leanne saying she's at 7.12. So she's getting there. This is where we were at in January, Leanne. I will tell you that. Um, we were at the 7,000 mark when the turn of the new year. So it took us about six months and we've built up a little bit more. Yeah, see, and she's saying she has a professional Instagram, which is what we've got as well. Facebook and Twitter accounts for her YouTube channel. So yes, you want to combine everything and that will start building your business up. The other thing is, is Leanna is one as well, but we're both Amazon influencers um, where we earn money off of things that we sell, that we promote. Um, so that's a different way to look at making money as well. I also am an affiliate with a couple different companies that um, including Harvest Right, uh, Harvest Right freeze dry machine. And we make a little bit of money there as well as Glowforge, um, the Glowforge uh, laser machines. I'm an affiliate with them as well. So you find what works for you and just go from there. So let's get our giveaway up here. We've got 19 in the giveaway, you guys. So let me, let me share this screen here. There it is. All right. Any more entries? Hashtag cutting board for anyone who's just come in. Like my daughter Rowan came in here. Rowan, you may not win. I will tell you that you can only win on Boots and Bounty Homestead. Rowan won two of their t-shirts to you guys. And we will have our merch up. I got the email this morning, the congratulations. So our merch shelf, um, it was processing when we started this today. Um, so that'll be up, but we'll be giving away a couple t-shirts, um, as well as some tumblers and some other things, um, uh, at our 10,000 giveaway. So <laughs> Rowan says, okay, okay. She says she wants to win too. She's only allowed to win on the boots and bounty though. We've decided she can come in here anytime. <laughs> and then Leanne says that I'm very generous for her to win there. Absolutely. She's won. She actually won those shirts fair and square. That was not on my account. Um, the coffee cup was on my account and I have yet to use that coffee cup. So I'm going to have to order my own this week. So I have my own coffee cup. I will do a different color than red so that I can have my own coffee cup from Boots and Bounty. So, um, but you guys, like I said, you find what works for your business. So things that have not worked, I've never been able to raise enough fish to sell. Um, let's go ahead and do this. Anybody else want to do the cutting board? And you guys can send me whatever you want to, whoever the winner is, can send me whatever they want to etch onto this. So if there's no more, then I'm going to go ahead and hit draw. All right, you guys. So let's see who's going to send me a logo or a saying. 
Very cool. Gus Mania, excellent. So you just send me whatever it is that you want on this, and we will go from there and get that etched in the mail to you. All right. Awesome. You guys, this is just one of the many things I look to give back. Um, somebody asked me one day why I give away so much on my lives, why I do a live giveaway. And I do it because I'm so proud of being around you guys. Um, we have the capability of making and creating and doing. Um, and as you can see, I mean, I've got like back here, we've got, these are all tumbler boxes. I've got tumblers back here. These are all things that we're constantly running in our business. Um, and that's how we found to make the best money for us. Um, but everybody's different. So um, find what works for you. Like I said, you can start small. You can raise mealworms. You can start out by buying 10,000 mealworms and start a mealworm colony and where they start making babies and that. And you can start selling out little jars of those. You can do earthworms and do wigglers and sell out that. You can start with manure if you already have animals. But all of those items are definitely things that you can do. Uh, microgreens are a big seller right now, especially those that, um, I hate saying it, but the ones in California that are eating healthier, they like the microgreens on their sandwiches. Um, and I actually love microgreens. I like to sit and eat them too. So... <laughs> Jesse's saying Jerisha won, but I have to respin because she was asleep and she doesn't get to win. <laughs> so you guys have an amazing day. Astute Taurus, it's so glad to see you. And Annette, it's two o'clock in the morning. I love you, girl. I'm so glad you got to be on here. I will talk to you in your tomorrow when you get back up. So um, just shoot me an email. But um, yeah, you guys. Again, if there's ever anything, if you ever need help with your businesses or getting things off the ground on your homestead, don't be afraid to reach out to me or to others that are doing the same thing that are in our community. Um, oh, Black Travel Homestead, we laser etch. We, um, they're saying to tell them about this cutting board. Let me see. Let me see if I've got one that's reachable. Hey, Grayson. Or Berlin, yeah. come here for a second, please. I'm gonna have them grab one of the, one of the cutting boards we already have made, so you can see. Um, right now, my hallways are all boxes. I actually had a livestock show that we did a bunch of stuff for this weekend. Um, look in those boxes and see if you can find one of the cutting boards. I don't care which one is. It's in what I think it's in the hallway, baby. I think it's one of those blue boxes, maybe because the purple ones are also. Um, any size cutting board, he's going to grab whatever he can find in one of our storage boxes. Um, winner, winner, chicken dinner. He found one in the very first box he opened. Okay, so this is one of our bigger ones. What's this one? Oh, so this one is actually our, one of our sample ones. So this is one of the big ones. Um, so we burn etch, um, laser etch into different cutting boards. So we do logos and, and that kind of thing. And this is one of the, this is one of our big ones that we do sell. Um, so what I actually pulled out that I had sitting in here was one of the smaller mini cutting boards, um, and you can do different things or, or that on, on those. So, um, so yeah, so that's actually one of the things that we do and we sell a lot of, we actually sell a lot of them that are, thank you for buying my market animal at the fair 2022. Um, so these are buyer gifts is what we actually started making these as, um, but this one is one that I had as a sample. So, oh, Jesse says he never wins anything, but I know that I've sent him things. So, and I actually have a project that I've been working on for Jesse. Um, yeah, Kentucky, our website is kristenlarry.com. I do not have any tumblers on there, but that's actually on my list of things to do today. Larry's off this week, so I'm kind of working around his schedule, but we've got, um, we have 16 signs to get cut today as well. So, these are the kind of the things that we do. But yeah, kristenlarry.com is our website. Um, and I will throw tumblers on there. Um, if you shoot me an email, I'll let you know when they're up and on there. Um, we've just been so busy with everything else that we haven't even gotten those going. I do. I have two glow forges. Um, 
and that's what we use for our laser cutting. So, but we are going to have our 10,000 giveaway, you guys here. Um, <laughs> you guys, I just, I love reading your comments. You guys are so funny. I just absolutely love it. Um, Tony just said hello to my snobby canning sister at Grace and Fire. I just love you guys. The, the camaraderie that everyone has is just amazing. Um, and then, you know, Grace and Fire just threw right back for Kettle Kitchen. So, uh, but yeah, you guys find what works. Start with manure. If you have, if you have goats or rabbits, start scooping up manure and putting them in feed bags and start storing them upright in feed bags. Um, and that's actually where we started selling. And I think we were selling them for like $5 a piece and it's, it's poop. It's free for you guys. And so, um, uh, you know what? My house is not in order. I'm <laughs> She's saying right here, I need led by your uh, positive spunky uppy agent. My house is crazy, not in order right now. I'm actually getting ready to, I will go make some yogurt today. We have lots of milk. We've got cheese milk to boil. Um, so we'll be getting that going today. I'll actually have videos on that this probably next week. Um, and just go from there. Chicken beak saying hashtag $10,000. I wish I had $10,000 to give out to everybody. I sure wish I did. Um, but you guys, like I said. Oh, and she's saying, I love my Norix towel wash with it. See? So you guys, and that's another thing is, is direct sales does not make a ton of money unless you're really working your business, but you can offer that kind of stuff. Um, and, and that's every little penny helps. I know for us, we do not have all of our income in one basket. Um, I've got our homesteading stuff, our, our goat soap, um, and the sell of babies every year pays for all of our feed for the season, um, for the entire year. So I do have that. Um, like I said, the manure, you guys can start doing manure after you're doing it on your own. Um, you can go ahead and start doing, oh, you guys, I love you. You guys are amazing. Um, but I want everybody to know that they don't have to think of their homestead as just this money grabber. You can throw that money back out. So you can you can make money off of your homestead. It's not just about what you're making for yourself, but what you're doing for other people. And I think that's really important when it comes to your homestead. Um, my biggest thing is when I get working in my studio, it gets crazy. Like I said, I've got boxes everywhere. So like I said, we've got koozies that just came in that we'll be, we'll be doing our logo and stuff on. Um, so we've got those, I've got things everywhere right now. My kids were actually organizing me this week <laughs> and I woke up with this migraine on Saturday morning. So, um, but yeah, you guys, like I said, you find what works for you and focus on that and then start to go out once one business gets moving. So whether it's manure or mealworms or canning something, as long as you, like I said, fit in your lots, double check that, but just keep going and going out. Yep. Kentucky says, I am a postal carrier. So just want everybody know shipping is about to make a jump in price, something to keep in mind. Absolutely. We write our shipping into our price of our items. And unfortunately, our items may be going up in price because of that, because wood prices have gone up too. Um, but yes, keep that in mind as you're going. Um, make sure that you have enough profit when you're making items. Um, I use... Uh, pirate ship and they sent out an email about two weeks ago uh, that came across. Um, the best thing that I've done is from some of my bigger signs, it's about $15 to ship. So this one, yeah, the, the medium flat. I do this off of, it's just the medium flat size. So it's this, it's a long skinny and these fit my signs perfectly. So um, I have to take into consideration how much, if, if I'm selling them on Etsy, how much the Etsy fee is, how much my shipping fee is, and how much my wood fee and laser time is on it. Once I get that figured out, then I know how much um, time I put into it so I know how much I can charge. So those are some of the things that you do. Um, 
Dust Mania, I have been looking at making these. I may end up doing that, but um, yeah, these are awesome, you guys. So she has found something that works for her and her family that they can start selling. These are the beeswax wraps that you put on top of your food bowls. Um, and then you just rinse them off and use them again. Um, and they're an organic way. Um, so they're not using plastic and you are recycling. Um, but these are amazing. And this is something that definitely look at doing. And she's found that, that niche for herself. Um, yeah. See, and Jesse's saying save on shipping by using pirate ship. You guys, the other thing is when you're doing stickers like right now, and I'll throw up this link really quick. Um, let me find my link here. And I actually make money back and you get a coupon on. Oh, it would help if I actually typed in the password in the password box, I guess. Um, sticker mules sale this month is the three inch rounds so this one is gathered together homesteads is the three inch round stickers and that's the deal for this month but let me give you um there should be a link that i can share with you guys maybe it says i'm signed in but that's about it little sample. Oh, here we go. Um, it says get a $10 credit, give a $10 credit. So let me share this link. Um, but this is their deal this month. And I don't know if the $10 goes on the deals, but I will throw this out there to you. So this is, that should do my invite affiliates where I get 10 bucks and you get 10 bucks. Um, but yeah, so these are the three inch. So this is the sale, the round, it's the circle ones this month. Um, here's another one that was our round circle. So those are the sticker deals. Here's actually one another company sent me. This is one of the, I don't, I get acrylic from these guys. They sent me a sticker in their box this week as well. Um, but those are, those are the deals for this week um, from Sticker Mule. Um, what does it say? It's 100. No, it's 50 three by three inch circles for 19 bucks. Um, normally $68, including free shipping. So that's definitely um, worth looking into. So, and then Grace and Fire says, I have everything to make beeswax cloth. I just need to do it. Absolutely. And get on that. Because like I said, people are wanting to buy, especially with prices and things going up. I People are wanting to buy local. They're wanting to buy from small businesses. Are you coming in to say hello? Grayson's got a red tongue. Say hi. <laughs> How's that piglet feeling? Okay, good. Um. Hey, Matt and Sarah, I see you guys in the chat. It's good to see you. Um, Catherine Gardening, we will see you later. She's saying goodbye in there, you guys. Um, in the background, at work. Uh, makeup moms and sons, hello. How are you today? So you guys, we're actually getting ready to, to end this. I appreciate everyone who's been in here. I will post a list um, and a couple websites that we found different ways to make money and uh, from your homestead. So I'll post all of the lists that I have and we'll get that up. You guys, if you, if you ever want to look at bees, Matt and Sarah are the ones to look at. Um, they raise honeybees and are amazing. And I watch their videos. And I'm just, oh. <laughs> so check them out. But everybody, make sure that you're checking out all the channels that are in here. And you guys, like I said, we, we're we so thrilled. We'll be putting our 10,000 giveaway link up here. I have to get with Larry when he gets back from meeting with that crew. Um, and we'll figure out what day we want to do that. But I we are so thrilled. Um to get to this point and I'm very humbled that you guys continue to join us and follow us and, and listen to what I have to say. So, um, rich cat ranch, we will see you guys soon. <laughs> Thank you. I need to bottle my energy and sell it. If I could just do that, then my, uh, my homestead would pay for itself there, Kentucky. Um, 
And thank you. Thank you for seven. We appreciate it. We appreciate everything that everyone does um, in this community. So you guys have a blessed day. Jerusha, send me an email, chris at chrisandlarry.com and let me know what you want on that cutting board and I will get that cut today and shipped out. Um, so you guys have a blessed day and we will see you on the next video. Tomorrow we'll be dropping one. We'll see you then. Bye for now, you guys.